In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the tangent function. And to begin with, we're going to look at two different ways that the tangent function can be built. The first is off of definition of tangent. If you recall back to your studies in geometry, a tangent line was one that touched the edge of an object but did not cross into it. So if we were to take our unit circle and draw a line at the equation x equals 1, we would end up with this vertical line that sits tangent to our function, or to our unit circle. The way a tangent function derives its name is if we were to draw a line from uh, in uh, standard position from the origin, where would that line with angle theta intersect our tangent line of x equals 1. Whatever that location is, is the value of the tangent of that theta value. So, let's start at the beginning. If we have a zero degree, we're at zero. That's where it touches the equation y equal, or x equals 1. If we move up to 45 degrees, it actually touches right at the value of 1. So at pi over 4, we're at a positive 1. If we were to take smaller values, we would end up with lower level intersection points. The higher we go past 45 degrees, the higher up, or pi over 4, the higher up we are going to be on our function until we get to pi over 2 and we have a line that's parallel so it will never intersect and we end up with an asymptote. Then if we were to move the opposite direction, a negative pi over 4 intersects at a negative 1 and similar building it has a reflexive or a rotational symmetry characteristic until we're at negative pi over 4 and we have another vertical asymptote. So our function of tangent x or tangent theta ends up looking like this. It has some similar characteristics to a cubic function but this one is asymptotic. We do have these limits at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Then once we were to cross over, say into quadrant 2, we, it would resume, come up, moving into quadrant 3, would make another, and you end up with a series of this exact same graph being repeated. So by definition of tangent, this is how we build the function. Another way is more geometric tangent, if you recall, of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent leg. The sine of theta is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse and cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. We can actually define tangent as being the sine of, a func of an angle theta divided by the cosine of that same angle. If we take opposite over hypotenuse and divide by adjacent over hypotenuse, we would multiply by the reciprocal. The hypotenuses would simplify out to 1 and we'd be left with opposite divided by adjacent. So if we take our unit circle as shown here and divide each y value which is the sine of that angle by the x value the cosine we will end up with our tangent values. So what is 0 divided by 1? That is 0. What's 1 half divided by radical 3 over 2? Multiply by the reciprocal, you have 1 over radical 3. Simplifying that, you end up with radical 3 over 3. Radical 2 over 2 divided by radical 2 over 2, the only thing divided by itself is 1. 
Radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half is just radical 3. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. And then we move into quadrant 2 where we have the same values, just our x's are negative. So we have a negative radical 3, negative 1, negative radical 3 over 3, and 0 again. <coughs> then, quadrant 3, we have negative divided by a negative. We'd have radical 3 over 3, 1, radical 3, undefined, on the negative y-axis, because negative 1 divided by 0 cannot be done. Then, we'll have a negative radical 3, negative 1, negative radical 3 over 3, and back to 0. So if you know your sine and cosine values, you can simply divide sine by cosine and end up with tangent at that value. So either method is very helpful and can be used to build this. Because in one rotation of the unit circle, we repeat our graph, our period of this function is a little different than what we had for the others. Our period is going to be equal to the value of pi divided by b because we repeat every pi units. One cycle normally occurs from negative pi over 2b to pi over 2b and there's asymptotes at the end of each cycle. Now a, our parent function, is y equals a tangent of b theta. a still acts as a vertical stretch factor. Um, at this point we're not going to be doing a whole lot with it, but if we were to make this a two unit circle everything would be doubled. If we made a three unit circle everything would be tripled and it would just increase along the y-axis those range values. So let's get a little bit of practice of actually graphing a couple. We're going to graph each of the following y equals tangent of 3 theta and y equals tangent of 1 half or pi halves theta. So for the first one tangent of 3 theta let's work out our period. The period of this is equal to pi divided by b. In this case it is pi divided by 3. So every pi thirds we will have a complete function or a complete cycle of our function. So how does this graph begin? If you remember we have a point at 0, 0. Then it goes up to an asymptote, resumes on the other side, and comes back and that ends at 0 again at our the end of our interval. So this becomes our full interval. Halfway in between we have that asymptote. Then it will repeat. Based on the grid system that we have here, every two lines we will show an asymptote. And between those, on the pi third values, we will have zeros. So, we start at zero and move up to an asymptote, resume at the bottom side, cross the zero, move up to an asymptote, and simply repeat this for all items within the interval that we're given. So if you're told to graph from zero to two pi, you'll fill it in. If you're told to graph one cycle, then you would limit it down to just from zero until it returns to zero. Let's see how this looks with a different period. So we're graphing tangent of pi halves theta. So our period in this case is equal to pi divided by pi halves. Dividing by a fraction gives us pi over 1 times 2 over pi. Our pi simplify to 1. Our period is 2 in this case. So 
we interpret this out that the value 2 is approximately right here. We had a 0 at 0 and then another 0 at the end of our period and we have an asymptote halfway in between. Continuing on like this as a rough approximation these aren't quite right, they're off by a decimal factor, but we end up with a graph that looks like this. So the graphs of tangents look considerably different, but they do also process through rather quickly. A little bit of new information, learning that unit circle and the values for sine and cosine on it will help you to be able to evaluate tangent functions and we'll be able to use this as we move forward into how to begin manipulating other aspects of these functions and how to use trig relationships in other, as in other venues.